When it comes to the email in prison, you don't, as an inmate, you don't get an email address, okay? I don't get Sean at, you know, clubfed.com or prison.com. You don't own an email address. You get to send out emails to people and receive them via the core links and the true links, but you actually do not get assigned an email address. So you can't tell everybody I'm going to prison and, you know, just send me an email. You have to be the first to initiate it. You invite them. They accept your email. Then you can correspond back and forth. But you never own an email that you could just hand out to people. Needed to throw that in here. Just adding this to the video. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, right? Yeah, okay. Hi, this is Club Fed John here with another video. All about the federal prison system. Usually talk about the uh, camps and the lows for you nonviolent criminals out there. Uh, if you're facing federal prison time or you uh, have family members that are facing federal prison time or you're just curious, well, this is a channel for the nonviolent offenders. Uh, that includes drug dealers, white collar crimes, all that. I don't really focus on the penitentiaries in my videos, but there's plenty of prison channels out there. Um, but this is for your average Joe that goes to prison. I'm not a lot. I try to help you guys out, get you through this, and uh, let you know when you do go to a federal prison camp, you're going to be in a safe place, believe it or not. And uh, there's no games to join, no cars. You don't have to show your paperwork. Um, and uh, for you, those of you that don't think there's a club fed, well, to me, there's a club fed. Okay. I've been to county jails and I grew up in. Uh, real poor parts of town, and from my background, it's club fed. If you're a rich, you know, middle class, higher, upper class, doctor, lawyer, stockbroker, you, you're going to have high expectations, and it's not going to be club fed to you. But for your average working Joe, federal prison camps are club fed. Having said that, uh, did you know that you can email your family from prison, and you can receive emails back and forth? Yes, uh, and, and this counts. Uh, this video is going to actually probably be good for the penitentiaries and the mediums because I think the email system works the same way in those. I've never been to a penitentiary, and I don't plan to, so I don't know a whole lot about those. But I did 52 months at a federal prison camp in Florence, Colorado. My videos are all about that experience. So back to the email. Today I'm going to try to explain it for dummies, okay? Because uh, it's not your normal email. It's kind of primitive. Think of email back in the 1990s. You can only text. You can't send pictures. You can't send music. You can't download things. You can't upload things. So uh, it's called uh, True Links on the inside. It's called Core Links on the outside. What does that mean on the inside and the outside? Well, on the inside, I mean when you're inside prison. The email system is called True Links. And the people who receive your email on the outside use a system called Core Links to retrieve your email. And it costs up 10 cents a minute to send an email, 10 cents a minute to read an email. So I'm going to show you some of the web, the BOP, that's the Bureau of Prisons website, what they say about True Links. And uh, I'm going to go over this with you step by step how it works. So if you're wondering, this is a typical. Uh, Email room in, in a federal prison. Some of them are in the TV rooms combined with terminals like this. Other parts of the prison might have a room just separate for emails. Uh, my federal prison camp had these in the law library and several of the so your emails cost 10 cents a where minute we watch the TV. To, to write the email and when you receive one to read it. So if you're a fast reader or a fast writer, you're not going to spend as much, but you know, if you get a five-page letter from someone, a five-page email letter, it's going to take you a little while to read it. They have an option of printing for 15 cents a page. I recommend you do that. Uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but emails can be expensive. It's cheaper to write a letter. And I'll tell you, um, there's nothing like receiving a letter from your family. A letter is like gold. 
when somebody takes the time to find a pen or find a piece of paper, to find an envelope, to find a stamp, to look up your name and your registration number, write all that on the envelope, and to take the time to just write to you, I mean, that means a lot to me. Uh, an email is the next best thing, though. So let me take you over to the BOP website. This is True Links, and I'm going to read you what the BOP says about True Links. Then I'll try to re-explain it in maybe dummies' terms. True Links, the Trust Fund Limited Inmate Computer System, True Links, is the inmate computer network that provides inmates access to multiple services. At no time do the inmates have any access to the internet. Inmates access dedicated TrueLinks workstations installed in various housing units and common areas to perform various functions using their registration number, phone access code, and the fingerprint process or commissary personal identification number, your PIN. Inmate access to these workstations varies depending on the institution. So, having read all that, there is a fingerprint process there's a little thing for your fingerprint next to the terminal and that's how you're going to log in you also have an access code after that there's also a phone access code that's your pack code and uh there's your commissary code and uh we'll get to all these later and that's when you use when you go to use the phone to dial outside to people that's where you're going to use your phone access code uh, they believe it or not they actually have video phones in some prisons now uh, today's video is all about the emails uh, i'm going to do one on the telephones and how to set up a uh, google voice and get a cheaper phone call home i'm also going to do a video later today on uh, mp3 players and how they work and how you download songs onto them and all that but this is just the emails so TrueLinks service allows inmates to search and view their commissary telephone and TrueLink account transactions as well as view their media list. And the media list is all the songs you can download on your MP3 player. So there's a bulletin board. Uh, this service is used to supplement the use of inmate bulletin boards within the com within the institution. Uh, so basically, this, these bulletin boards are the prison it might tell you that there's going to be a special meal on a special holiday fourth of july is com com coming up and they'll have the special menu on the fourth of july you usually got barbecue chicken and a hamburger and a hot dog and pie and ice cream yes believe it or not you get all that on fourth of july and they barbecue it outside um there's a contact list and this is uh the list of uh let's say your mother and you're going to put her name her address her email and her telephone number and uh the telephone number has to be approved by the prison it usually doesn't take more than an hour or two to prove their phone number before you can call them you get caught with a cell phone dialing a phone number that's on your contact list you're going to be shipped out of that camp and sent to a low and thrown in the shoe and lose your good time Stay away from cell phones and use the phones provided in the prison, guys. If an email address is entered for a contact, TrueLinks sends a system-generated message to the contact directing them to corelinks.com to accept or reject email contact with the inmate prior to receiving any messages from the inmate. If a positive response is received, and the, the, the inmate may begin exchanging electronic messages with this contact. If a contact rejects TrueLink's participation, the inmate is blocked from sending any messages to that email address. So once you fill out your contact list, so let's say you're going to email your mother. You put her name and her address and her email on that. Now you are going to send her your first generated message from TrueLink's. And let's say she has a gmail let's call it mom dot mom at gmail dot com mom's gonna see on her gmail that she has a message from core leaks and she's gonna open it up and it says you have a message from an inmate at a federal prison do you accept or reject this email if she accepts it then it's gonna take her over to the core leaks website 
Let me show you that. And this is CoreLinks. She has to sign up for a CoreLinks account. I've already done that. Let me log in and show you. Uh, I am human. I have to pick all the images that look like a car. Let's see. I'm in. I get to proceed. It's a real simple website. Here's the mailbox. Uh, here's the inbox. And I have messages from a guy named Jonathan who I've done an interview with. Talked to him on the phone for a few months before he turned himself in. And you click on there. And then, as you can see, here's the message. And this is what the inmate wrote to me. And then I can reply. And I can write him back and I can reply. I will cancel the reply. I'll go back. If I want to send a new message, I can do that. And here I would click all my recipients. You can have more than one inmate on there. And that's kind of how CoreLeaks looks. Uh, I also want to show you guys, there's an app for CoreLeaks on your cell phone. It costs $6 a year. And it's worth it, especially if you have a family member in there. Because every time you get an email from an inmate out of prison, uh, it's not going to go to your Gmail anymore. It only goes there that first time. It's like a courtesy time. Although I've heard once in a while it still comes to your Gmail. But even then, you got to go over to the Cortex. You got to log in with your password and your username. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a hassle. But if you have, let me see if I can show you the core links. Well, it's not showing up here. I have core links on my cell phone. And, well, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's real simple. It just says message from inmate. I click it. The message shows up. I can hit here and I can type in or I can voice text him back. And I can hit reply, and it sends him a message, and it's just that easy. And it's six bucks a year. And every time I get a message from an inmate at a prison, my phone beeps. There's a little dot on the core links. I click it, and I read the message instantly. It's that easy. And uh, if you have loved ones in prison, they will love you if you spend the six bucks a year for the core links app. It's really worth it. Let me go back to the true links. Uh, so you can also check your funds on TrueLinks. Uh, this, this is called Manage Your Funds. This service allows inmates to manage their personal funds by creating, canceling requests for withdrawal of inmate personal funds and their pre-release account. And let's say you want to pay the PG&E bill at your house while you are in prison. Did you know you can do that? You can actually have a check printed up. You have to go through your case manager, though. But on the true links, you put in a request for $82 for PG&E. And your case manager will approve it or disapprove it. It comes out of your fund, all right? And then they will issue you a check. You'll go pick it up at the front office, and it'll be for the $82 to PG&E. Put it in an envelope and pay your bill. Um, you can do that. You can um, take money out for that. Uh, that's the only, you never can have cash, but you are allowed to, uh, some guys pay their child support that way. And that's kind of why they have that. Child support's a big deal. And you can have the child support check just sent directly to wherever it's got to be sent. So you can actually still take care of some of those bills while you're in prison. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. There's a printing system. This print, this service allows inmates the opportunity to print various documents marked for print within True Links. Mailing labels, BP199 forms, paper printed here for free. All other documents can be printed at a cost. So, mailing labels. So, I told you the contact list. I put my mother in her address and her email and her phone number. Well, if I want to write her a letter, a lot of uh, prisons actually require you to have a mailing label. So there's going to be a printer, and it's usually not in the same room as, at least at my camp, there was no printer in the TV room where the terminals were. The printer was in the law library. 
but we had to use the terminal at the TV room and I would want to print up address labels and it let you print up I think as much as you wanted um, and and they were, were they free or there was at least 10 a day you could get for free so I'd print up 10 contacts I hit the print button I go to the law library and I get a mailing uh, label uh, and it's the type that you peel off and put on a and put on an envelope. So yeah, I think you got ten on every page. Anyways, I had I had I probably had a hundred labels at one time because I wrote a lot of letters. Um, so you can do that. The BP one ninety nine forms, your complaint forms, anything you want to write up. Most of your government forms that you're going to use while you're in prison. Um, they're, they're, I mean, work furlough. Uh, I mean. Furlough applications, all your legal stuff you can print from the true links, from the bulletin board. You can print that up. You can even print up the menu if you wanted to. So there's a lot of things you can print. Uh, public messaging. Inmates may correspond with friends and family using public messaging. This is a restricted version of email that will only allow text messages and no attachments. There is a cost per minute fee for using this service. Messages are limited to 13,000 characters. So that, like I said, it's 10 cents a minute. Now, if you wanted to print up that five page email that came from your mom instead of, you know, it might take me 20 minutes to read five pages. But uh, it's 15 cents a page. So what is that? 45, 60, 75 cents. I can print up the five pages, but now I get to hold it in my hand and I can. I can take it back to my room, and I can read it at my leisure, and uh, I, I think it's a better deal to print it up than to try to read something that's on a screen, uh, you know, in a hurry, because then you're not going to soak it all in, you know what I mean? Um, then here's the email, inmate telephone system, we won't get to that. I want to go back up here to the commissary, because it talks about true links. Here we go. Commissary, the BOP maintains inmate money's deposit fund while incarcerated. The purpose of the deposit fund is to provide inmates the privilege of obtaining merchandise and services either not provided by the BOP or a different quality than that provided by the BOP. An inmate may use funds in their account to purchase items at the institution commissary, place funds on their inmate phone account, purchase true link units, for their TrueLinks account or send funds by creating a BP-199. Inmates may not be in possession of cash at any time. Upon release, all trust fund accounts will be consolidated and placed on an inmate release debit card. Commissary and validation schedules are posted on the inmate bulletin boards. Funds are withdrawn after positive identification by inmate identification card or fingerprint identification. It is the inmate's responsibility to know the amount of money available in their account. Inmates may verify their account balances by utilizing the true links or the inmate telephone 118 plus PAC, which is what you dial on the phone, and that will tell you the balance of your account. Inmates must have their identification card in their possession at all times for identification purposes. So. I don't know if you're confused. I hope you're not. Um, there's a few rules when you use your uh, TrueLinks terminal, uh, especially if they're in the TV room. So at my camp, the the uh, the black TV room had email terminals in it. Now, uh, even at a camp, I could go watch TV in the black TV room if I've been invited in. Okay, so it's kind of out of respect and invitation uh, it, it happens and it doesn't happen you know maybe there's a basketball game and the other TV rooms aren't showing the basketball game and I asked the black guys hey man I'm a Warriors fan do you guys mind if I watch the game in here with you and you know uh, most of the time as long as there's extra chairs they'll say yeah but they also have five terminals in there for my email now I don't need to ask them permission to enter their room to use the terminals okay as long as there's an empty chair but let's say there's a basketball game going on and there's five chairs in front of the email terminals and the guys in the tv room are not using the terminals but they got the chair turned around so they can watch the game on tv 
you got to do this the right way. You can ask him, hey, can I use this chair because I want to use the email system. And if he asks them respectfully, he'll get off the chair and he'll give it to you. That's just kind of how we do it. But you don't want to go up to him and go, hey, man, uh, get, off the, get out of the chair, God damn it! I need to use the computer. It's all about respect in prison, okay? If so, if somebody sits in a chair that's supposed to be for the terminal, they're supposed to be aware that somebody can come up and ask them for the chair to use the terminal, and they know to get up. Uh, there's also uh, chargers in almost all the TV rooms, chargers for your MP3 players, uh, like a phone charger, uh, and people... Maybe there's 10 little cords. So people will come in to the other, to the Mexican TV room, grab the uh, MP3 charger, the phone charger thing, and plug it in their MP3, and then leave it on this little shelf and walk away. Believe it or not, nobody steals your MP3s because every two weeks you have to log into your MP3 with your fingerprint and a password and reset it. Every if you don't do if you don't do this after two weeks the MP3 player is useless it won't you can't play it it won't do anything it turns off so that's how they keep people from stealing other MP3 players and it keeps them from selling MP3 players but they have radios you can buy that are used I'll talk about that in the next video let me see here what I've covered uh, talked about the phone list the labels the email the dummies um the 10 cents a minute i hope i covered everything on how the email system works um if you have any questions if you have any comments put them down below and i will answer you back please subscribe to my channel guys give it a like leave some comments i'll see you in the next video thanks guys